We just finished talking about basicity and what causes bases to be stronger. And I've also mentioned that there's such a thing as a super acid. Well, then let's consider super bases. So a super base we're, we will define is having a gas phase proton affinity greater than a thousand kilojoules per mole. At first, this may seem like kind of an arbitrary cutoff, but you'll note if you're looking at a lot of different nitrogen bases, they're approaching a thousand kilojoules per mole, but there, there is a separation there. And as something that is just kind of a point of comparison, it's not exactly the same because these are measured in water. Um, we should note that lithium hydroxide in water so not gas phase, but in water, uh, has a proton affinity of a thousand kilojoules per mole. And that is uh, less than the power of uh, sodium hydroxide, which is less than potassium hydroxide, which is less than cesium hydroxide. And that one is uh, 1,118 kilojoules per mole. So these are just as a reference, and we're not going to necessarily think of these just as super bases. They're very good bases, as we can see by the value here, and as the ionic character, or the the availability of the hydroxide increases with the increasing stability of the positive charge, then the strength increases. Now, these are excellent bases, but hydroxide is also an, a good nucleophile. So, that could be a problem. And that really depends on what kind of reaction we're doing. So if it's important for us to not have a nucleophile in our reaction, now a lot of these videos and everything, what I'm focusing on right now is inorganic chemistry and the thought process behind that, but it can instruct us when we're thinking about organic and we are going to look at a lot of bases that organic chemists tend to use in this particular video. So if you're thinking about something like trying to do an elimination reaction, then we'd rather skew this towards not using a nucleophile, which would compete with the elimination reaction, substitution then. So instead of that, we could use a different base. We could use something that's bulkier and something that's just not so good as a nucleophile. And one of the common ones that is also a super base is uh, called 1,8-diazo bicyclo 5.4.0 undec 7 ene which is quite a mouthful, so naturally we've abbreviated it to uh, just DBU. And instead of writing out that whole name, I'm just going to draw the structure.
And this has a pro gas phase proton affinity of 1048 kilojoules per mole. So it fits our definition of super base. And indeed, this is a workhorse. It gets used a lot in organic synthesis. Anytime you want um, a very strong base that will not act as a nucleophile, DBU is an excellent choice. Another one that gets used a lot is 1,8-bis dimethylamino naphthalene. So again, I'm going to draw that out instead of writing out the name. Like so. And this is sometimes called a proton sponge. For its ability to soak up protons. Now, if I recall correctly, this isn't a particularly fast base, but it tends to really hold on to the elect uh, to the protons. And because the gas phase basicity is greater than 1000 at 1028, it also qualifies as a super base. Now you might question that because there are these methyl groups on here and you might say, there's a lot of steric hindrance in here and I would expect this to be a, a lower basicity for that reason. That's a good thought, but if we are positioning these methyl groups, kind of how I've drawn them, as you might think. Uh, the problem with that is now the lone pairs are going to be facing each other, and there'll be lone pair, lone pair repulsion, especially with the proximity here. So the preference is actually going to be to push these methyl groups in close to each other and free up the lone pair because the other lone pair is going to push it away. And because of that, the lone pairs are actually fairly available. And we get a lot of electron density being fed in from these methyl groups to increase the basicity of the nitrogens here. So we're getting the inductive effect of feeding in the electron density without the major penalty with the um, sterics. It's kind of an interesting property that happens there. Um, next, we can look at 1,3-bis dimethylaminopropane, which is similar to our proton sponge. It has a very uh, similar structure. I'll use a methyl for the abbreviation. Now I'm drawing it in this configuration, but as you can imagine, this is flexible. It's probably going to spread itself out and not be right next to each other. So this is not going to benefit from the lone pairs forcing the methyl groups away, but it does benefit from the fact that this aryl group up here is less donating than the alkyl group down here. And so in this case, we get a little bit stronger basicity at 1035 kilojoules per mole. Now I should mention that there are other super bases. This is just a selection of them. Now I have one more to draw, and this one will take a little bit of time, but it's it's 111 tris one amino propyl methyl amine. So here's the amine, 
and there's the methyl group, and then we need to draw all of the three one amino propyl groups. So let's see here, one, two, three, and then the nitrogen, and then we've got to do this again. One, So there it is. And this one has a very high basicity at 1,072 kilojoules per mole. Now, in this case, it's theorized that these groups can wrap around this nitrogen and form a little bit of a cage around the proton and really hold it in and keep it away from the anion, right? And so that's kind of the competition, right? That proton has to come from some other molecule and it's going to leave an anion behind, right? Assuming that it was a neutral acid. So that proton leaves and we have an anion. Now, for that to compete, it would have to interact with the proton again, right? The anion would have to be attracted to the proton. If it is surrounded by the molecule here, the base, that will block the anion from interacting with the proton and really hang on to that proton. Now, the other thing that this has going for it is a lot of electron donation and not that much steric hindrance for where the nitrogens actually are. And so that contributes to the basicity of this particular superbase. So there are different strategies for how to make a superbase, and they're quite useful, especially when we want to remove a proton. However, we do not want nucleophilic character. All of these examples here are not particularly good nucleophiles. In fact, most of them would be quite terrible. However, they are excellent at grabbing onto protons. This allows them to be used in a lot of different organic synthesis for the target of getting the basic uh, reactivity and not the nucleophilic reactivity.